Hey everybody, welcome back to Photorec.tv. I'm Toby and I'm back with another Monday Minute. These are quick tips designed to get you working smarter in photography. We've been working our way through a series of Lightroom tips. I want to talk about color today. we're going to dive right in. So I've got this picture of um, some bleeding hearts and you know I'd like the pink or red tones to be just a little bit more exciting. So of course we can bring the vibrance up and the saturation up but when we do that globally we very quickly introduce some colors that just aren't in reality anymore. The greens back here are just way too much. So I'm just going to double click to reset both those and bring them back to something normal and come down in here to the HSL and color panel. Now, if you click color, you get this updated look. This is a recent update to Lightroom. Now we've got these little donut colors here and we can work through the different colors. So we can come into the red and we can start to manipulate this and you can see how without masking anything, Lightroom just is looking for that reddish hue and is allowing us to adjust that. So I could actually shift that towards the magenta a little bit more. And of course I can bring that saturation up a little. Look, it's so nice. I'm only increasing the saturation of the magenta color, or in this case, sorry, the red color. And of course you can use the brightness value as well. Luminance is just how bright that color is. So we could wash it out, which is kind of the opposite of what we want to do, or we can bring it down, which further increases the color. Now we can come over to the magenta and we can work through this as well because I think some of this absolutely is magenta colored. Um, but you can go to the HSL panel. It is the exact same controls as the color, but they are presented to you in a different fashion. So now instead of going individually color by color and being able to adjust the hue, saturation, luminance, now we are either in hue, saturation, or luminance and are presented with all of the colors. This doesn't really help us though. We want to kind of work this as one, not just manipulating the red and the magenta. So this little donut picker over here, you click it once and you bring it over to the color you want to manipulate. Click and now if you drag up and down, you are moving the sliders for those colors. In this case, it looks like I nailed a solid magenta pixel because that's the only slider that's moving. Let's move it in a slightly different location. Now look at that, both red and magenta are moving almost equally. So that pixel that I nailed there is uh, you know, roughly um, split between red and magenta. And now I am able to very nicely kind of add a little bit of saturation to just the flower petals themselves using the red and the magenta. And maybe you feel like the green in the background is a little too strong. It's taking away from this. So we can bring that down. And notice how those colors from those flower petals themselves still really pop. So one way to work this. Now let's switch to another image real quick. Uh, classic New England fall scene. And we've got some beautiful oranges, some reds, some greens, some yellows. I just want to come in here to the hue section of this one and look at, let's reset this. So holding down the Alt key changes the title to reset. So I'm going to click that. And notice that it's a bit more yellow and green than what we just saw. That's because I've manipulated this some. So let's come down into this green channel right here and let's just start to shift this towards the yellow. And this is a classic use of the HSL panels to help you out a little bit in the fall colors. You can see how you can really shift. Now let's shift that a little bit and then come back up to the yellow which runs from green to orange and shift that in that direction as well. So you can see that you can really manipulate the individual colors without doing anything other than moving these sliders. So both of these cases are kind of classic, hey, I want to make a certain color a little bit more punchy. Uh, I want to shift it into the direction that is a little bit more exciting. and that's a common use for this, but there's another use for this. All right, in this last example that I want to show, this is a really powerful tool and can be very useful, especially if you're photographing people often. 
uh, on a hotter day, people can get a little red-cheeked or red-nosed. Uh, maybe you've got a couple that one of them is a little bit nervous about being photographed and is, is blushing. Um, or, in the case of my daughter here, maybe she got a little too much sun on her cheeks at the beach a couple of years ago. So I'm going to show you how to remove some of the red from the skin. So I am really going to only be working in the red. So I'm going to come back over to the color and pick the red because these are the three sliders that I want to work with first. First thing that I want to do is I want to shift this red towards the orange a little bit. And that's going to kind of push that red from being that kind of cherry sunburned skin color a little bit more towards a natural looking, just a little bit of a warmer tone skin color. Now the saturation, let's be dramatic for a second and just bring it down because this shows something that is important to be aware of. When you are fixated on fixing something, you're sometimes forgetting about other spots in the image that might have those colors naturally, like her lips. Suddenly this becomes a very creepy, very different image. So yes, we can bring the saturation down some to reduce some of those colors in the cheeks, but you really need to be careful that you aren't getting to a point where there's other parts of the skin or body that don't look natural. So I'm just gonna split the difference a little bit there. Now luminance, I, we could talk about, if you come down, it gets dark, doesn't look good, but if you come up, it just starts to wash that area out. Now, we don't wanna go too far again, um, but notice the lips stay pretty natural looking, I think. They get a little paler, but somewhere in here again, splitting the difference a little bit. And we could work the same through the magenta. I, you know, I don't know if that skin tone, no, see? This is how I tell if I don't want to use the dropper. Just start moving back and forth. The only thing Lightroom sees is magenta in here is the collar itself. So just by working, we have now reduced her sunburned. And in the future, when she sees this picture, she can't say, Dad, how did you let me get so sunburned? You're terrible. And I just say, yeah, I know. Fixed it for you. One other way we can fix it, though, real quick. Go in the brush tool. Um, and let's zero this all out. And I'm going to brush on right on that cheeky area. Maybe you feel like the, the lips lost a little too much color. So this is another option here. And now that's where we've brushed. Shift O changes the color of the brushing. So if you don't want red. And now I'm going to use this newish hue adjustment. And I can just push this from the magenta to the right a little bit. And we lose further red. Let's remember where this came from and where we ended up. Not bad. If you found this quick tip helpful, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe along with a little bell so you'll be notified of future videos. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.